Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks, where we are about to unbox a new AmazeFit product. Now, you've heard of the uh, AmazeFit Pace, and this is the AmazeFit Smartwatch 2. Mm, sometimes called the Pace 2, but it's not really because they're not using the Pace name. Sometimes called the Strata, but I'm not sure if this is the Strata or. The Strata is reserved for the international version of this watch because you see what we are unwrapping here in this package is the um, basic AmazeFit smartwatch 2 which supports Chinese language only. I know, I know, I know, but you remember when we got the AmazeFit Pace and I just couldn't wait any longer and the only thing that was available was in Chinese and we even used Google Translate to try to figure out how it would work. <laughs> Boy, that was a nightmare. And then we got the actual Pace and you guys had a feel for what it would do before we saw it. Well, we're gonna do the same thing today by taking a look at the Chinese version of the AmazeFit uh, smartwatch 2. I want to call it the Pace 2 so bad. I better look at it in writing. Here it is from GearBest. Thank you guys for taking the lunge and sending out this expensive watch in Chinese only, knowing that the market's probably going to be for the international version. But you know what? They've reserved the international one. We're the first one to get one when they get it. And they're looking for you guys to... Uh, Hang in there and check the show notes. I'll have the link to this one now and the international one the moment it's available with coupons if we got them so you can pick up from GearBest before they sell out the international version, which should be in about a month. Okay, until then, let's look at this one. Now, some things about this watch. Here's the basic specifications. It's IP57, folks. It is not waterproof. However, it says you can swim in it. So we got some things, uh, search the web and so will I and let us know in the show notes if you found this thing is waterproof or not. It's got 512 megabytes of RAM, four gigabytes of ROM. That means a lot to an Android watch, but for this one, I'm not sure. You're not really downloading apps and I guess you could use the storage for music. Uh, in the meantime, you have vibration, you have, I think, sound in it, um, but definitely vibration, anti-lost, all those things with tethering. It's, got, it's primarily a health and fitness type of a watch, a sports watch. You've got all these different functions, of course, sleep monitoring and, and all of those. You've, you don't have Wi-Fi in this one. Mm -mm. And I'm pretty sure the Amazfit Pace had Wi-Fi as well as the Bluetooth hookup. So this one, you're either on your own, out and about, or you're tethered by Bluetooth to do things like syncing up your clock and all that. You have uh, notifications, though, from your phone to the watch. That's supported. An OLED always on, I believe, monitor uh, uh, dial. You'll see that. 280 small uh, battery, which gives you an op a charging time of two hours and five days worth of uh, usage, which, if the screen is low power, is reasonable. And it's a silicone band, Android and iOS capable. And there's all your weights and sizes. Uh, so let's take a look. First of all, notice the packaging. As always, AmazeFit does, you know, a Macy's or Neiman Marcus kind of a, a packaging. You could sell this at a high-end store. You could give it as a high-end gift, um, definitely, because it's a high-end watch. <laughs> Pretty expensive uh, for a fitness watch. Let's take it out. Okay, looks like it can come out of here, and then we can take out the rest of the box and find that, yeah, even down in the sub-layers, they've, they've really made it nice. They've got your manual nicely inserted here and a charging dock that looks like this with a, a maze fit written on it. And it looks like the wire comes out of the side and it's going to attach like this. Wow. Okay, it looks like we are going to need to keep the bands open. I want you to see this. Oh, the bands are nice and pliable. Probably removable. Oh yeah, definitely. See that? Removable bands. Okay, let's try laying it in there. Wow, you got to get it just right. It's not magnetic if you've... Well, it is slightly, but the fit has got to be perfect. You know, that's the same with the, the uh, thing for the pace. 
the, the dock is kind of weird and awkward, and you had to snap it in. Wow. And this has got a cutout for the heart rate sensor, which is protruding, I guess, to get a better connection with your arm. The charging pins are there. And three buttons, or two buttons and a camera, right, on the side. No, that's a button. I know, I'm acting like I don't know about this watch. <laughs> All you guys that say, why don't you test it out before you do the video? Because I enjoy the unboxing. Okay, it's in there, but yeah, it could be way better, in my opinion, giving you an honest opinion. We've got two small buttons and one right here on the side. Looks like it's a twisty knob as well. And we've got a cover that's showing as if it were on. We'll take that off, and then we'll take a look at the manual. There's a QR code we're going to scan to get the AmazeFit uh, Watch 2 app. It's not in the Google Play Store. Um, I'll show you that over here. Had a couple of more things. There were the specs. And then I was going to show you that you have all these different sport modes, which we will see in Chinese. So memorize the icons, and we'll look at them on the watch. And then there's this. It's talking about an AmazeFit Watch app 2. Not in the Google Play Store, only in Chinese. I'm not going to be able to demo this to you um, because it's not really uh, available for us. So it's a hint of what's to come. These are some of the displays you'll see. But when you've got the watch up and running in the international version, I'm sure this will be in English and available through the Google Play Store. In the meantime, hey, give it a try. Maybe you can download it directly from China if you'd like. Uh, the, chi the manual is, of course, totally in Chinese, but from the pictures, you can get an idea that that's about Bluetooth tethering, that's about charging, and that's specs, it looks like, with the battery information. On this side is more detail. You can probably point your phone at the screen with Google Translate turned on, and that will let you um, interpret or translate what you're seeing. I see the word amaze fit showing up in English. And that's it. And that's the manual. All right. We're going to charge it up. And uh, first of all, look at, look at the finish on this. This is really beautiful work. You don't want to skip over that too quickly. And yeah, yeah, we will bring in the original pace uh, as appropriate to show along with this one from time to time in this review. In the meantime, let's get going. Docks. The first thing we're going to look at are docks. This is the dock for the original AmazeFit Pace. A little plastic piece, had the ability to plug in a US micro USB connector here and charge it from any standard USB charger. Had some drawbacks. Let's call in the Pace and let me show you. Here we go, the original Pace right here. And you see the lineup of these things here and a, a kind of a pin connection here to line it up. The idea was you'd line it up and press it down like so. And it doesn't go in and it doesn't charge. And you have to twist it with no notches to line it up and get it exactly perfectly horizontal. And you can't really see what that is especially on your nightstand in the dark, and push it down where it kind of snaps in, and the pins are in the groove, the connectors are there, and this would light up and say it's charging. And it's connected really solid, but it's snap with just these things that could snap anywhere. And so the alignment depends on the pin lining up perfectly down below. Many times I've popped this on, and it's been just a little bit off and it didn't charge overnight. Big drawback. Well, let's look at the new charger. Here we go. For the AmazeFit Watch 2, Strata, whatever you want to call it. Big drawback. It's got a hardwired connection into the dock itself. That could fatigue over time. If you trip on it, whatever. It goes right to a USB connector and it's only that long. Did you see the preview for the wrinkle in time? How long does it take the spider to get from here to there? <sighs> it's instant! They wrinkle time. Good movie. Oprah Winfrey's in it. President Oprah. Anyway, I digress. Uh, we've got a problem. I really don't like uh, 
docks with dangles that it's very thin. It's not reinforced. Yuck. Uh, it's also a dock that you've got to snap into. Let's call over the AmazeFit watch too. Look at that screen. Look at that transflective screen. Isn't that beautiful? We'll get there. Right now we're doing docks. It's trying to do heart rate. It's trying to light up. It's ready to go. We got to line the dock up in just the right way. Notice there's no keys to it, so I could put it in upside down if I wanted to. And of course, it's not going to work. There's no pins to line it up with. You got to make sure when you take it off that you've got things lined up right. You see that? You see that? You see the wire, you see the button, you got to have the button on the side of the wire. So if your tendency is to lay it in bed this way, it's going to be upside down. Now you're going to have to, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to take it, I'm going to position it, and I'm going to say, okay, it's charging. No, it's not, because it's got a really, 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 am I making you want this watch? There, did you hear that? It's snapped in now. It's in there solid. And you'll see it start charging. So in both of these, the trick is have it plugged into the USB ahead of time, punch it down until it gets in there, and the screen should light up with the amount of power it's got and say that it's charging and show you a big percentage number on the screen. When it does that, you're charging. Big drawback to a maze fit. I'm so sad that you guys haven't matured and come up with something as simple as a little magnetic coupling wire that you can just snap or drop onto the back and it'll automatically align. But this is what we've got when uh, you go high tech with high expense uh, devices. And to take it apart, not an easy task either. Don't grab the wire and pull it, gang. Don't let your six-year-old do that. You gotta, like, I guess grab a band and get it to come off. Wow. Fail point. Okay. The rest of this review is going to be good. I really, I really like the watch. Look at that. Isn't that great? Okay. That's the, um, the dock thing. Next, I want to migrate you to the app. And we're going to talk about that. Now, on this one, I'm gonna get it out because you see the button's hidden. You can't really turn it on when it's in the charger either. I'm going to turn it on, he says. Press and hold. Okay, it's going to power up and it's going to do all that pretty twirling and everything. And while it does that, let me tell you what we had to do. First of all, the AmazeFit Watch app that's in the Google Play Store does not work. However, it's in the right direction. It actually needs to be updated to AmazeFit Watch 2. So feel free to download the app from the Google Play Store if you would like, but you're going to have to scan that QR code you saw in the manual, and you're going to have to go to that China resource, and you're going to have to download the updated AmazeFit Watch app. Now, if you already have AmazeFit Watch installed, yeah, it's fine. When you've downloaded it and you go to install the new one you downloaded from China, it's going to update the original AmazeFit Watch app and it'll be AmazeFit Watch 2. But it won't say that in the title. But when you look at the actual... Wow! <laughs> Never had a watch do that before. You, you know what? You know what you're listening to? <laughs> you're listening to my... <laughs> to my smoke alarm. The lizards love to play in the smoke alarm. This is George, everybody, and he wanted to apologize for setting off the smoke alarm. Look, this is what happens when you turn one of these AmazeFit watches on. Okay, I'm gonna rag a little bit on them again. You can't use this. You cannot turn on this watch and use it at all until you've downloaded the app, you've created an account, You've logged in with your account. You've set up your Bluetooth properly, and you've synced your watch to your phone by using the camera in your phone to scan the QR code in your watch to pair the two. That's right. It's an elaborate technical process, and it requires you to absolutely have your uh, phone ready to go and to do it because 
until it's synced, you don't get past the QR code. That's what happened on this one, on the brand new one. This is the pace that I've used all along and you've seen in previous reviews. And I had to go through this in the first uh, iteration with the Amazfit Watch. Now, with the Amazfit Watch 2 update, I get the option to log in to this watch, and now this one shows up as one of them that you can link to. And I was able to do that through having my account already set up, updating the app through the China source, and then scanning the QR code with the camera as it comes up on this one. And now they're currently linked, so I'll be able to show you all of that stuff. And of course, as soon as I unlinked this one from the watch, it erased everything. It got rid of all of my data, it backed it up to the cloud, and it had it on this watch, on the phone as well. But it deleted everything and restored this to a basic virgin watch ready to be given away or sold with none of my data on it. You cannot have the two watches set up at the same time on the app directly like that if you unpair. As soon as you unpair this, it unpairs it and restores this back to factory default. Does a, an automatic factory reset. But all the data that was on here is on here. It transferred over all of my running data and all the other cycling data and stuff that I had accumulated has been moved over, migrated to the new watch. So if you have a pace and you have an Amazfit watch too, um, you'll be able to choose which one you want. You're just gonna have to cross connect them. Now it does look like you can add a device in this app and it may be possible to have two linked to the app at the same time. But the, what I had to do with that update to the Chinese version of the new revision of the watch was to unpair this and there we are, we're back to basic beginning. All right, this is the opening screen or this is the about screen when you're inside the app and as this thing gets going and gets connected, you see a few other screens with some tips. They're sort of in English Chinese. So I'm going to walk you through that before we actually start looking at what happens on the watch. Here we go. These are screenshots now. When you actually get connected, it's dropping you into this main opening page and it's going to say paired successfully. It's also going to show you the new title of the app is Amazfit Sports Watch 2, which is so long that it overlays where it says connected, but you know that you're in the Amazfit Sports Watch 2. And this is your activity, and it's attempting to sync to the new watch. Okay? As it goes along, it's going to give you tips. Here's the tips for using the hardware keys. It's all in Chinese. But you get an idea when you look at the picture. From the watch face screen, use the hardware keys to quickly start an activity. Show quick. So this is what happens when you hit the upper key. This is where you go when you tap the middle key. It looks like it's dropping you into the choice of sport that you can scroll down to choose which sporting activity you want to do from the watch screen. This is the bottom one. And this looks like it's your app drawer where you have access to your messaging and the weather and uh, stuff like that. That's all from that first layer of pushing these buttons. Okay. Now, tips for using the hardware keys in an activity. So if you've gone into an activity like running, biking, or swimming, okay, which you got to from that middle button and choosing one of them, now your three buttons change. This top one looks like this, probably where you start and pause the activity. Your middle one is a data field, so it's looking like this, your time and distance and whatever that particular sport is gonna display for you. And your bottom button looks like this. And that looks like the lapse time, and I don't know, maybe it's a stopwatch. You got your Google Translate in your phone, you got this playing on, on your tablet or computer? Turn your Google Translate into camera mode, point it at the screen, and see what you get in terms of translation for those. Aha! Now, tips for using the hardware keys. Long press up, center key to go back. That's here. Long press up center key to go back, it said, and then this is what you'll get on the center key. So this one takes you to that screen. 
This one takes you to that screen, and that's it. There's nothing happening for the lower screen. Now, one thing, or lower button, one thing I noticed in different places, like if you are in this screen here, where you have the different stuff, you can scroll and go to the different uh, sports, but you can also use the up and down button, it appeared, we'll try that, to uh, just simply navigate up or down the list. So the three buttons change depending on what mode you're in as to exactly what they'll do. In addition to all this, they've got this function here that if you cover the screen with your palm to lock it from anywhere in the system, if you have that feature turned on in the settings. So you just palm it and you can lock uh, the watch and go about whatever you're doing and don't worry that you're acti accidentally going to go into some of the different features. Cool. All right. Those are the tips. Now, a little bit more. When I first got this, and I'm sure it'll be the same way with you because they're constantly doing firmware updates for these AmazeFit watches, you're going to get a notification that there's an update in the app. Because you downloaded it from China, we're talking, what, March, April 2018. This may not apply if you're watching this a year or two later, maybe even just a few months later. But here and now, if you get this Chinese-only version, which is the only one that's out, of the AmazeFit Sports Watch 2, um, then you're stuck with this. If there's an update, it's going to want you to update immediately, or you could skip it. I highly suggest you update, but I also suggest you don't do it from here because it wouldn't work. That's right. I couldn't get it to work from here, but I could get it to work once I got connected to Wi-Fi. What? Mr. Tix, you just said there's no Wi-Fi on this watch. I know, I know. It wasn't in the specs. But guess what? It's got Wi-Fi. You'll see that in a second. Uh, once you're on Wi-Fi, then you can go into the update feature like we've shown you doing on this one before, and you can execute this firmware update from the watch, and it works perfectly. But it didn't want to happen from the app, so just... Make sure you, if you see that, you're going to do it from here. Man, I'm saving you guys a whole bunch of time. I really am. Here's the change log in Chinese for ROM version 2.0.11.1, which is what they want you to update to. Take it all in, because that's all of the changes that are in the latest revision. Ha. <sighs> okay, we're back live on the app now. I'm going to show you just a little bit more and segue back over to the watch itself. Let's bring the watch up. I'm going to tap on the device, which is up here. Connected. There you go. This is the one that's connected right now. Try to get that screen. Well, you know what? Back. Get the back lit up. There. I'm going to go into the watch face center, and you're going to see that I have a bunch of the watch faces, no, not downloaded, but in my watch faces, that we've already seen on the pace. But there's a few other ones in Chinese now that are new, including the one that we're on right now. And if you want to see what these look like, tap it, it'll transfer it, and there you go. Now we've got this really nice, anytime you want to see it, just the time display. Yay! Yay! That's been one of my complaints is that I just sometimes want to see the time. There you go, nice and big. Here's another one, gives you a really nice high contrast, white on black. Notice it's in 24-hour mode. Can we make it 12-hour uh, mode? I don't know. We'll find out <laughs> when we run through the app. And you got all these other ones at your disposal as well. Some we've played with before, some are brand new. Here's a simple little analog watch. Yeah. Oh, do you see the hands jump? Very cool. So this is all what's happening now on the new uh, watch. And I'm going to set the app aside. We will come back and there's a lot more to look at there. Let's actually play with the watch itself. Okay, you saw the tips we just went through? Keep those in mind as you watch what I'm about to do. Remember I mentioned that these would go forward and back, and that if you press this one once, when it's off, you have to press it to wake it up. And it's not waking up. Hello? There we go. Press it once, and uh, it's in a kind of a lock mode, I guess, there. And now you're into the scrollable list of all of the different activities that you could exercise with. Remember we showed you that chart in English at the beginning? I ask you to memorize the icons. Triathlon, you think? Did you remember that one? Uh-huh. How about skiing and tennis and kicking a ball, I guess? Or jumping over a ball? I'm not sure. Anyway, they're all here. And look, 
If I press this button, I can go back. I press this button, I can go forward. A lot easier to see in action than it is uh, to try to explain it, but they gave us those tips. If you see over here, a little thing is just kind of flashing. That's like the scrollable edge there. The only thing we're missing, tick watch, is a tickle. You can't do it with a tickle on the side. Oh, it's not a tick watch? That's right, it's an amaze fit. Different company, different watch. So, no, uh, if you notice on here, there's no totals or, or summary or history or any of that. It's just pure exercise routines. When you go into any of them and you get started, you're on that place where you can go, and then you saw what it will do when you do the other thing. Okay, but this is different. We were back at the watch face, and... Again, this is back and forward, but it turns out this is just one of the pages somewhere near the beginning, but not at the very beginning, that you could actually scroll through. There, I went back one. You see way up here the dots? There, I went back one more. In fact, there's the beginning page, and you've got all of these quickly. You've got that one, that one, so forth. There's the watch face. Now i got to cover this one because the next one is the weather in your area followed by this one, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. We've got all these different screens, bunches of screens. Now we're going to take them in slow motion for those of you who care with the Google Translate on. There's the first dot. It says the data center. Not knowing what all these actually do, we're just going to go through see what it says they are. Small movement, movement record. Then we're at this one, which has options for running, walking, more. Let's select the more, and that's taking us to our scrollable list that we saw before. So that's another way to get into the list of different activities. That was from the third, and then we swipe once more, and we're back to the watch face itself. Going once more, you are in your weather, future weather, it says. Then scrolling to the next one. Come on. Oh, heart rate, it looks like. Yeah, heart rate record. And then we get to, it looks like, playing music. That's your music player. Just memorize these icons, folks. PayPal. Now, I don't know if this is really PayPal or it's the payment system in China. I imagine it's the Google Translate just changing it. This is an alarm clock, and that makes sense from the uh, uh, icon. This is the compass, and here you go. After you align it, you get this whole compass working. Then you've got a stopwatch. That's pretty clear. This is your sleep record from last night. Now, this is the training center, and we saw this in the AmazeFit Pace, although we haven't explored it much. But it's part of the same kind of concept. What in the world is this one? This is an FM thing. Himalayan FM. And you have to do this from the app, it says. Have not messed around with that one yet. That was it. Himalayan. I pushed the up button to go back. I guess I could do this one and go forward. That's the easiest way to do it. And then we get into this one. What is that saying? Oh, I can't get it. Well, let's go forward one more. This is a timer. Looks like it could be a countdown timer that you can add to. And that's the last one. Then it's back to the very beginning again, the data center. And we got to those from the watch face by scrolling to the left or scrolling to the right. And um, those are your upper level ones. Press and hold the top one. will take us back to the watch face. Press the center one. Gets us to our activities. You getting a feel for the watch? Great. Okay, then. Most folks would think we're about done. But you're not most folks, right? <laughs> Got any popcorn left? Oh, you're almost out. All right. Whoops. Don't want to go back. I want to be here. We've gone back and forth. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what we haven't done is scrolled this way. And this is where your notifications are if you have any pushed, tethered, from your phone and by the way they're pretty good on this they're readable they're all sorts of stuff you don't have the ability to answer them but you can definitely read them I may be wrong on that but I don't see a keyboard listed anywhere in the specs either come back to me 
if you scroll this way, you have four icons, you got the weather, you got your power, you got some information up there. This is your do not disturb, that's your airplane mode. Easy, huh? This is where you can change the brightness level. There's the automatic, I believe. It'll automatically dim uh, to the room level. There's one, which is really low. Two, three, four, and we have it on the highest one, five. One thing left, and that's the gear, which is the settings. The overall settings for this watch are here. And they're in Chinese, but they're icon-driven. You notice that you've got another gear here. I press this one, and I'm into the sub-settings, where you have toggles on these different things. This is an, uh, it says 24, and now it says 12. We just changed it back to 12-hour mode. That's one of the ways you can do that. There's the Do Not Disturb stuff. Some more Do Not Disturb automatic, it looks like. There's the uh, airplane mode. We had accessibility to these from that one main screen, but you can get to them in settings as well. Here's another interesting icon. Put your Google Translate on it. I'm not going to guide you all the way through here, just enough to whet your appetite so you can see what these things are. Here's where we can set that brightness level again, I believe. Uh, you can have um, timed uh, raise your arm to see, twist your arm to see the time, and, and you can set that so it doesn't happen during the night, which is really cool. Here's something with a switch. There's something that you can touch. And here's some uh, probably band information. And that should be everything in the sub settings section underneath this section, where you also have the ability to upload to the cloud. This is where you check to see if you have any updates that you uh, firmware pushes. This is where you're going to end up going on the watch. When I told you you want to do that and check first, uh, if, if you get that on the phone, this is where you want to touch it on the watch, the up arrow. Um, there's something else. Here's some more apps, it looks like. When you press in here, you go into um, these things. Yeah. And when you go in here, you get information about the watch. And this should tell us what kind of watch it is and all the different levels of information that we're on. We're on 2.0111. There's a serial number, I guess. There's more information. Again, you can throw Google Translator on it to try and read what the, uh, the words are here. This looks like a LAN thing. CMIT ID and so forth. And then this is a labs. This, I think, is where they're cooking up new stuff. If you want a beta test, you can set yourself up to see things that may be buggy. Uh, that's what that looked like and how it worked over on the original Pace. And then there's uh, where you can send comments, feedback to these guys. And that is everything under the overall settings which you got to by scrolling up. You can't go left or right or anywhere but down. And there's your watch face, which if we press and hold, also gets us into where we can change some of the information. And you can switch to the different watch faces. There, 3.55 p.m. So the 12.24 hour change capability is right here on the watch if you want to. And the ability to change watch faces is also right here on the watch. And that's my favorite. I'm just going to keep that one because I like it. Whoa, that's a different one. And it switched over to there. Hmm. Okay. They're just moving too fast for me, I guess. There's the first one. And it's kind of sticky because it's late in the afternoon. There, there's my nice white digital one. That's the one I wanted to be in. All right. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. If your labor rate's $1,000 an hour, I've just used up about $500, $600 worth, right? Uh, but we still have the app to finish covering. So let's take a look at that. So here's where we left out, connected to this watch. You still have 90% power left in the watch after all of this. The watch face center we looked at. Then you have these different apps that you can uh, change the settings for. In sports, you can go into these settings. 
in weather, you can set different locations. This one that's in Chinese, that's the uh, Himalaya? <laughs> I don't know, Sha Shama, Shamala, Shama, Shamalaya sound. I really got to start studying uh, Chinese. Do you have any idea what this is? Me either. Um, but there it is. It looks like airplane mode. These are all different icons. Okay. Huh. Whole app for that. And then file manager. Here's where you got your music files uh, from the watch that you can then, I presume, transfer over to the... Uh, these are on the phone that you could transfer over to the watch. Really interesting. Okay. So those are some things there, and you just select them and upload them, put them on the watch, and then I presume you can listen to the music from there. Widgets and app management. So you can turn selected ones on and off. I'm not going to be using Alipay. Close. Um, I don't know. Probably not using the training thing. Anyway. Um, and you can reorder them as well. You, if you like the compass, you can move it up right after the weather. Whatever you'd like to do. All that capability is there. And more. ROM updates and test your notification. And here's where you unpair it. If I were to hit that, it's going to tell me it's going to wipe out the watch, basically. And I get to reconnect to a different one. All right. That is everything you see under the top area that we touched to get where we were connected. Here's the tips we saw for the hardware keys. Here's your activity. This is the heart rate that I've had it on and off and played with it. Uh, here's your sleep information and all that's on this overall first page. Oh, that's cute. Look at the little uh, bike going by. Wow, how fun. Um, sports. Now these are records that I did with the pace and they've been imported. So here's a cycling one, for example. And it brought on the map and everything. Very cool. And then all of your uh, overall records are maintained with weekly and daily and so forth averages. And then a tab for you, which is me right there with my ID number on here. And you can uh, check on your status, your watch. My watch says I'm connected to here, and it took me to that basic same settings for the watch. Just another way to get there. Uh, you can pair a new watch. Here we go. Uh, this is where I'm hoping I can get two watches together at the same time and not have to wipe out one at the expense of the other. We'll play with that a little bit. And then you've got overall settings your system's permissions and such. You can change your distance, weight, and height uh, units. You can log out a course from your actual account, which is different than unpairing from your watch. You can add separate accounts. So you can add different watches and different accounts, and you can check the version for updates. And again, we're running the latest version because we just downloaded that from China in order for this thing to work with this new Chinese version of the Amazfit watch, smartwatch 2. Yeah, and then finally a help area that when you go in here, it's gonna link you into um, a variety of help topics, all of which are in Chinese. Okay, so we know we're connected here on the Amazfit Sportwatch 2, and we also know that on the uh, Pace, we are not connected. We just can get to here. So it's going to let me connect a second device. That would be this one. And it's asking for the QR code. Let's brighten it up. Let's scan the code. It's probably going to give me a number sequence, so I'll do that off screen. Yep, got a beep. It says it's connecting. It's got a pass key on both devices like you normally would see with a Bluetooth pairing, and I'm saying to connect it. And it's connecting, and I'm going to go ahead and restore the data. So it should be restoring the same data that's on this watch to this watch. This one still appears to be connected. So those of you who own a Pace, 
there's a good chance if you want to keep that one and work with it and also have the new a uh, really well-designed three-button version, you can get that one too and have them both paired together with the same app. And there we are. It looks like it's syncing. It's gotten everything in here. It's got all of my stuff from sports that I had before. Which hand would you like to wear it on? Well, I'll wear this one on my right hand. Beeped or vibrated, I mean. There is no sound, by the way. It just vibrates. Now it's setting itself up. Vibrated again. And it's just twirling away. Ta-da! There it is! Wow! Okay, we've got the pace up now, which means I should be able to go over to um, here and here, where it says I'm connected to this watch, go to the watch face center, go to my watches. Now look, I have different watch selections. I've got all these funky, crazy, colorful things. I get this one, camouflage, and that's what that looks like, which is different than this one. So I have different watch face selections for the different watches, all coming to us from the same app. Very, very interesting. So let me summarize for you, for those of you who've totally run out of popcorn and patience. We are looking at an AmazeFit Sport Watch 2. AmazeFit Pace 2, if you want to call it that, although it's not physically designed the same, but it sure seems to be operating similarly. Uh, you could call it the Strata. You could call it the Chinese-only version, whatever you'd like. Uh, but I got last-minute stuff for you as we summarize. Look at the bands between the two. They're similar but slightly different. They're both the soft TPU kind. They're both definitely totally removable. This is a more elegant all-black band. This is more sporty. This thing looks like a little flying saucer. It's smaller. This is much bigger. It's got uh, etchings on it. Uh, they both have the heart rate monitor. They both use docks. We talked about that at the beginning. If you missed that part, go back because it's important. Um, three buttons on here that do a variety of things. This is mostly forward and back. This is a recessed button way underneath. A lot of people complained about that, but it makes it when it's on look um, just really elegant. There's no, there's no buttons to it anywhere. And bring that light up. Okay. There you go. That's what it looks like for this watch on your awesome arm. And here's, <laughs> here's the other one. It's thicker. It's a thicker watch. Uh-huh. But it's got some fancy design to it. Bigger watch, fancier watch. Definitely, yeah, different, different effect altogether. Seems that they operate very similar. And the new one is supporting 11 different kinds of sports modes. There they are in English related to it. And if I recall, I saw some other things past this that looked like, um, remember somebody jumping over a ball and somebody playing tennis and so forth? So I think there's more than the eight that are shown here. Well, duh, <laughs> says 11, but the picture only showed us eight. So how can you get one of these? You can get this Chinese version right now, right now, from GearBest. Check the show notes down below for a link to pick it up. If I have any coupons periodically, I'll have them up there for you. The English version is on reserve to be sent out here, or I'll call it the international version, uh, probably within a month. It should operate identical, I would say, if not just minor cosmetic differences to this one. So if you're okay with working with the Chinese uh icon driven system if you understood how it works you could get this one right now and and be whoop that's the english version of the base nobody caught me are you guys sleeping out there jeez don't let me go on and on like that it's embarrassing <laughs> okay this is the chinese version it, the english will look the international version will look just like this i'm sure and have different firmware you want to uh change this chinese version to english it can be done. 
I take no responsibility. I don't know anything about it, and I'm not doing it. But again, in the show notes, I'm going to put a link to information that you can uh, use to flash the English firmware to this Chinese version of the new Amazfit Sport Smart Watch 2. Okay? Uh, it, it's, it's been done. In fact, the guy's got a review up on it, uh, the whole thing, in English. Uh, because it's not out yet officially in the international version. But he's flashed it. It takes a bit of work. you got to know what you're doing, but it is doable. So you could buy this one now. You could, uh, at your own risk, if you're good at technology, you could flash the international uh, firmware to it right away. And because it's pretty much hardware going to be the same, I imagine you could keep up with it as the uh, international evolves. Otherwise, you could just leave it in the Chinese and work with it icon-driven as it is. Or use your Google Translator, as we've talked about. Wow, all right, I have definitely eaten up way more of your time than either of us expected, but I do appreciate you sticking with us all the way to the end. And uh, we will see you again with a whole bunch of more new stuff. Really interesting, crazy stuff is coming in now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be quite a year for Watches 2018. I will see you again soon, and thanks for watching, and really thanks for your thumbs up and your subscription. This is George, everybody, and he wanted to apologize for setting off the smoke alarm. He told me he's sorry, and he wants to make it up to you. And You know what he wants to do? He wants to go and scroll through the... Uh, the settings on, on both watches at the same time so you can see Chinese and English because they should line up pretty close. But his hands are kind of sticky on the screen, so he asked me to help out. I'm going to let him go outside and send him on his way and, and then honor his wish to show you the settings in English and Chinese. You okay with that? Okay, good. Okay, to do this, we'll swipe down and go into the nuts and bolts area. And there you go. The first thing is connection. And inside here is where you have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Those are your two connections. Then we have the overall deeper system stuff, which is right here. Now, time format. Uh-huh. Silent mode. Okay. Silent time. So you can set a, a time frame for it to be quiet. Airplane mode, right? Good. Oh, great idea. You got to listen to the lizards more often. There's the airplane uh, auto mode, I guess. Yeah, auto airplane. Then there's vibration, your different vibration levels. But that's not the same on here. Maybe that's that icon. We have that backlit. Oh, there's something else. And something else. There's backlit. We finally get to that. Here's um, uh, the activate on wrist. We've seen that one. And there's the... This is now where you can set a time frame for it to light up so it doesn't do it while you're asleep. Auto upload. Hmm. Oh, don't go out on me. Oh, I just turned it on. I turned that back off. Then uh, this thing is a tap to wake. Yeah. And then a wear habit. Is it on your left arm or your right arm? Okay. That was that second thing. Then this one is upload to the cloud. We got that one right. Then there's watch faces. And this one has uh, something different right there. And watch faces, I think, are there. And this is now... Here, that's the update. That's how we check the update. Oh, all right. I guess that was new. Um, this is device. Followed by, we have a search for find my phone on this one. We don't have that here. Then we have this other thing for apps. We'll go in that in a second. And then we have about, which is the information. And then this one was called the lab. And then finally, uh, report an error. And so on this watch, we have this other area, which is probably the find my phone uh, thing. I have no idea what the sofa is. Unless you're the first one to leave a comment, you know that trick. If you're the first one to leave a comment, you get the sofa. Second one gets the bench, and everybody else gets the floor. 
There's five people in the first row and five people in the second row. And after that, you got to sit through the second viewing. So always leave a comment and a thumbs up. All right, I, they don't match exactly, but that gives you a little bit better shot at figuring out what this is in English.